name is Ivan and welcome to the RV Cooking Show, a place where I can share with you my passion for RVing and my love for recreating regional food specialties from all across the country right here in my RV kitchen. Today we're going to talk about the exquisite Maine Coast and I'm going to show you how to make some New England style fish chowder. Before we talk about the coast though, let's get the chowder on the stove. Fish chowder is easy and it is delicious. It doesn't have a lot of ingredients in it. And I'll tell you, I picked up this recipe several years ago when I first began full-timing and was touring the main coast. I went into a fishmonger and I began to ask the man behind the counter about fish chowder, how to make it, what you put in it. Behind me, I heard a little main voice and I turned around and it was a crusty old fishwife. A captain's wife, she couldn't have been more than five feet tall with the wrinkles of a Sharpe, and in her kind main way, she came up to me and shared with me her family's old fish chowder recipe. And that's what I'm going to share with you today. I want you to keep in mind though, you can put anything in your fish chowder. In my New England style fish chowder, I put one medium to large sweet onion chopped. It's about this size, and I chop it in whatever size pieces. It doesn't have to necessarily be small pieces because we're going to cook it up till it's translucent. I use about six small potatoes that are all cut to about the same size, the same chunks. You can use one or two large potatoes if you like. And I don't use too many potatoes because I want more fish in my fish chowder than potatoes. We're going to use some stock. You can use chicken stock or you can use seafood or fish stock. You can even use water. My husband doesn't like the real fishy taste of the seafood stock, so I use half chicken and half seafood. If you use only chicken, or if you use just water, you might want to add a bottle of clam juice just to give it a little more briny taste. I'm also going to use a can of high quality chopped clams with the juice, and the secret to New England style fish chatter, according to my fishwife friend, is evaporated milk. You can get this regular, low fat, or non fat, just like you find the milk in the dairy section. I use low fat because, oh, I think it's a little healthier for you. The regular is a little creamier. The non fat, of course, is a little waterier, a little more loose. And of course, our piece de resistance, the feature item, the fish in the fish chowder. For my fish chowder, I use about a pound and a half of fish. I try to get two or three different kinds of fish. You want boneless, skinless fillets, and you want to choose a fish that is firm, something that might not have an overpowering taste as well. In this case, I've got some cod, and I also have some skate wing. Let me show you what the skate wing looks like. It's a fish that's found in New England, and it almost looks like a, a cheese stick that pulls apart. It's tender, sweet, and delicious. This isn't the firmest fish though, so I'm going to put this on last. Now I know it's called fish chowder, but I love shellfish as well. So I'm going to add some shrimp. These are clean shrimp. They don't have their shells on them, but they do have their tails. And I'm going to use some sea scallops. Now this is a delicious, Oh, fresh sea scallop, but I've got a tip for you with a sea scallop. When you purchase them from your fishmonger, you want to take a look at them before you cook them. Oftentimes they will have a muscle on them. Now this muscle is what the scallop uses to hold its body to its shell. You want to make sure that you remove this before you cook it because it's chewy and doesn't taste very good. Simple to remove. All you do is grab a hold of it and pull it off. Simple, easy. Oops, this one kind of came apart. There we go. Simple, easy. There it is. You don't even see where it was. Delicious. And I'm going to cut my large scallops in half. I use about four large scallops. I use about eight large shrimp. Okay, let's go ahead and get our chowder started and then we'll talk about Maine. In my pot, I've got about one tablespoon of butter. It's melted. I'm going to put my onions in and we're going to cook them up until they're just translucent. Our onions have been cooking for about five minutes and they're nice and soft and translucent, as you can see. 
they look great and they smell delicious. The next step is to add our potatoes. Add our potatoes and we're going to put them in a single layer on top of the onions. The next step is to cover our potatoes completely with liquid. What I'm going to use is about one cup of chicken broth and about one cup of seafood stock. Mm. I'm going to put the cover on. I'm going to let this come to a boil and then I'm going to test my potatoes. I want to cook them until they are just a about tender enough to get my fork through. No more because I'm going to continue cooking them and I don't want them to fall apart in my chowder. How about I tell you about Maine? The coast of Maine is spectacular and if you haven't been I highly recommend you put that on your list of places to go RVing. We'll start by talking about Down East which is where Bar Harbor and Acadia National Park is located. Now we're not sure why they call it Down East but one of the leading theories is ships that sailed from Boston way back when sailed downwind in an easterly direction. I don't know, but I do know you need to stop at Acadia National Park where you can go atop Cadillac Mountain, which is the highest mountain point on the East Coast, and the vistas are fantastic. You might want to take a little side trip to a lesser known area of Acadia National Park called Skudik Point. Skudik Point is not peopled. It's not very well known. It's a place you can go and just be with nature. It really is something to see. You get a little bit closer to Portland, Maine, and you'll want to stop at the Portland Head Lighthouse in Fort Williams Park. A lot of people discount southern Maine. They think everything to see is in down east area or the mid coast area. But one of the most famous and one of the most photographed lighthouses is in the southern part of Maine in York. It's called Cape Nettick, or the Nubble Light for short. It's really something to see. You've also got the little art town of Ogonquit. And of course, in that area, you also have Kennebunkport. Uh, you know Kennebunkport as probably one of the homes of the Bush family. And you can drive by, but you can't drive in the Bush estate. Don't miss it. Make your plans to go visit Maine. And whatever you do, don't miss Southern Maine like a lot of people do. It, again, is just amazing. So we're ready to proceed with our next step, which is to add the fish. This is where it becomes fish chowder. One of the tricks to making this delicious fish chowder is layering the fish from the firmest on the bottom to the most tender on the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to gently layer my cod, which is the firmest on the bottom. Then I'm going to put my shrimp, and I'm going to put my scallops, then I'm going to put my skate, which is the most tender of the fish, on the top. I'm going to pour my can of clams with the juice atop all of that. I'm going to put my lid back on and I'm going to let it kind of steam a little bit, turn it down to mm, a little bit more than a simmer, and we'll let that cook about 10 minutes. Our last step is adding the evaporated milk. We're going to pour this right in. Oh yes. Mmm, delicious. Now we're going to get it in our bowl and then it will be time for lunch. And I'm hungry. Perfect. Now we're going to finish this off with some paprika. A turn or two of fresh ground black pepper. We're going to top it off with the last fabulous piece before we eat, which is a pat of butter right in the soup. This just looks delicious. We've got cod and skate and shrimp, scallops, potatoes, and this fantastic broth with a little bit of melted butter. You want to serve this with some fresh sourdough bread. You can find this recipe and others that we've made on the RV Cooking Show on our website at www rvcookingshow.com. Thanks for coming along and joining us today. I hope you make and enjoy some New England style fish chowder. And don't be a stranger. Come back and see us right here on the RV Cooking Show. <music>